All right, so now we've had a look at the uh, feasible frontier and basic and difference curves, we're going to move on to something a bit more complex. Uh, we're going to talk about reservation in difference curves and uh, how they relate to biological survival constraints. So the scenario we have here is basically there is a landlord trying to maximise his profits from a labourer renting his land to them. So, uh, he is essentially the proposer in an ultimatum game, making a take it or leave it offer to the labourer, uh, which her name is Angela, like it says at the bottom. Uh, we can see that this curve here is the labourer's feasibility frontier, uh, as it says there. So that is her maximum output, so it's her marginal rate of transformation, which basically means how much labour she puts in, in terms of hours, to her output. So her maximum output is 12 bushels of grain with an input of 24 hours. However, we'd say that this is not technically feasible because if we have a look at her biological survival constraint, which is represented by this green line, we can see that if she works 24 hours, uh, which is indicated by the zero, she is outside of her biological survival constraint, which means she cannot survive. So she can't be forced to work more than this amount by her landlord. Uh, so if the landlord is trying to maximise his profits, if he's going to force her to work too much, so over this point here, uh, if he makes her work anything inside of this green line, she will die. Uh, so anything above this green line is technically feasible. So everything here is technically feasible. And she can produce all of this. So the problem facing the landlord is he wants to get the most out of his labourer uh, in terms of rent without having to give her too much for biological survival. As we can see, the fewer hours of free time that the labourer has, the more food he consumes as the biological survival constraint curve becomes steeper, which implies he requires more bushels of grain which means the landlord is going to get less economic rent the more hours she works. So we're trying to find the sweet spot in between uh, hours worked to grains of bushel, uh, which is basically just like wheat or whatever I imagine. So she needs at least this point to survive. And we are playing this under the scenario that there is a government. We might go over the other example in a different lesson about whether the landlord is a pure dictator and takes Angela as a slave uh, and he has like full control, he has all the bargaining power and there is no law and there is no kind of safety net. However, in this scenario, we have what is called a reservation indifference curve because the government provides Angela in this scenario with a reservation option, which is represented by this point here, of her working zero hours, uh, zero hours worked, zero hours but she's getting subsistence wages for zero hours work in the form of uh, government welfare. 
So this is called her reservation option, which basically means that she is able to deny the the landlord's offer or the contracts, which is basically how many bushels of grain he's demanding. Because if we think in a scenario where there isn't this biological, sorry, there isn't this reservation indifference curve, if Angela doesn't accept the landlord's offer, well, she's going to walk away with nothing, which is going to leave her with no job, which is going to mean she's getting below the subsistence and she's going to starve to death. Uh, so she needs to accept this if there is no reservation indifference curve, because there's no government welfare, so because labour is less in demand than land in the scenario, she would just starve to death because she has to accept his offer. However, in this scenario, there is, so she's able to decline if the landlord doesn't offer her enough. So how much is enough? Well, the landlord would have to offer her en just enough in terms of bushels of land for cultivating the land to make it worth a while. And we know that anything in here is economically feasible for Angela because it's above her reservation indifference curve. So we can see that she's indifferent to working zero hours and receiving the government welfare uh, at subsistence to when she's at point D working for eight hours uh, however, receiving extra bushels of grain for her labour. And that would be the difference between this point and this point in how much economic rent she's getting from working. So, anything within this area is going to be economically feasible for the landlord to offer her. So what point in here should the landlord offer Angela, uh, offer her her share of the land? Well, it's going to be the point where the difference between these two lines is the greatest. So the further apart the uh, feasible frontier is from her reservation curve is how much economic rent the landlord is trying to get. So actually I, I won't be able to write that. Just I'll just draw a man with a moustache and a top hat. Okay that's going to be our landlord. Uh, yeah, he's going to want the most economic rent and the difference between this line I've just drawn is going to be how much economic rent he's going to receive. So if we have a look at lines C to D, uh, we can see that D is at 4.5 and C is at 9. So the economic rent he's going to receive is going to be 9 minus 4.5 is going to be 3.5 at point C to D. At a lower point, it's going to be less than 3.5. Sorry, 4.5. I thought that was wrong. Uh, anything to this direction is less than 4.5 and anything to this direction is less than 4.5. So the landlord is going to offer Angela point D on her reservation indifference curve and he's going to take all the surplus from lines D to C as rent 
and he knows Angela is going to accept this offer as she is indifferent to working zero hours and just getting government welfare or working eight hours and getting the extra grain from cultivating the land. So we know that that is the decision Angela is going to make, she's going to accept and the landlord is going to receive 4.5 bushels of grain as his reward for allowing Angela to rent his land. So that's going to be his economic rent. Uh, now, if we get rid of all that, I want to take a look at line A, B, because that is the scenario where there is no reservation indifference curve. So Angela has to accept an offer no matter what, and she's not going to receive any government welfare if she doesn't. So if she doesn't accept, she's going to starve to death. That means that the landlord can offer her point B, making her work 11 hours a day uh, and receiving four bushels of grain in return, which is going to just be her subsistence uh, wage. It's the minimum she needs for survival. So same as her subsistence wage that we talked about in the Malthusian traps uh, lesson. So she's going to be receiving her subsistence wage while the landlord is going to take everything on line A, B as surplus, which is going to be more than before, let's call that about 10, 10 bushels of output uh, and he's taken for, so he's going to be receiving an economic rent of six bushels. So the landlord is better off without this reservation and difference curve provided by the government. However, Angela is worse off as she is on a, she is less than her reservation indifference curve and she is poorer in both bushels of grain, so consumption and free time. So Angela is worse off at every point other than this point on the uh, biological survival constraint and reservation and difference curve. She's worse off at every point on the green one than the blue one. However, the landlord is better off on the green one than the blue one as he has to offer her less. But either way, the landlord is always going to offer her the points at which the slope of the biological survival constraint is the lowest so it's the it's going to be the flattest on the green line and it's going to be the steepest on the red line so there's going to be the greatest difference between them represented by the arrow i've drawn in the middle and that would be his economic rent without uh government welfare but like we said before when government welfare is provided he would have to offer her within cd because that would be economically feasible to her anything lower than that she would just reject and go for the government welfare at uh, zero hours of labor and get her subsistence wage from that so we can see there the differences in economic rent so now we've had a look at the idea of bi biological survival constraints, the minimum the labourer needs to survive. And we've had a look at reservation indifference curves, which is the reservation option of the labourer. So it allows them to reject the uh, take it or leave it offer made by the landlord, who is the proposer in this scenario because by, by making him the proposer, we're assuming that 
land is scarcer than labor. Because obviously, if labor was scarcer than land, it would be the labor making the landlord an offer because the landlord needs someone to cultivate his land to make the money. Uh, but that doesn't really matter in terms of this example. We've already talked about feasible frontiers in another lesson. So if you don't fully understand that, I recommend you go and have a look at it. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. If I just want to go over this quickly first before we go. Uh, what answer they get at the bottom, that the square there just basically represents what she got at uh, her biological survival constraint versus what she's getting at her reservation indifference curve. That's